Hello and welcome, this is Jennifer. This video is one that I've wanted to do for some time, but I really wanted to get it figured out before I shared it with you. I'm going to give you a look at the Heidi Swap Mink Machine, which is a foil applicator machine. A lot of people have been asking me about this. Today I'm teaming up with my friend Christina Werner. In my video, I'm going to show you how the machine works. And in her video, which I'll link to at the end of this, she's gonna show you a really cool project using the Mink Machine and also some downloads that she has. Before we jump in, I'm gonna go ahead and address a question I know many people will ask, and that is why do you need the mink machine instead of an inexpensive laminator? Now the answer is very simple. You get what you pay for. The mink machine is a better machine. It applies heat more evenly and pressure more evenly. There are five different settings which are extremely helpful when you're doing some of the techniques that I'm going to show you today. You can use an inexpensive laminator, but you'll have much better luck with the mink machine, and I think you'll get better results every time. If you are interested in seeing how you can do these techniques with just a regular laminator, I will link to some videos in the YouTube description below and on my blog. However, if you want to be sure of getting great results and do fun techniques and plan to do a lot of foiling, the mink is definitely for you. So let's go ahead and jump into looking at the machines. There are two available. There is a full size, which I'll show you in a moment, and this is the new Mink Mini. This is the one I would recommend to card makers. It's a more manageable size. Of course, it costs less, and it's, it takes anything six, six inches wide, which works for card makers. The Mink machines heat up super fast. Many laminators need to be left to warm up for quite some time, but this warms up quickly and lets you know when it's ready. There is a rele release switch on the back, and of course the on-off switch. The best part about the Mink is that there are five different settings, which I'll show you which each of the five settings are in a moment, and you just push the gold button there to turn it to the different settings. And it will let you know by turning green when it's ready to go. Okay, so I wanted to show you the bigger mink machine. This will take pieces that are 12 inches wide. So if you're a scrapbooker or you wanna do large prints, you can use the large mink machine. This is the Big Mama. This is the original one. And I use this one a lot because I make a lot of prints. So you can see the size difference here. This is very heavy and it's very wide. So that is something to keep in mind. But if you're serious about doing foiling, you may wanna consider the bigger size. I think it's about double the price of the mini, if I'm correct. There is a pretty big price difference between the two, but they both, I am finding, give great results for foiling. Because it fits in my screen better, I'm going to be using the mini version in this video, but you can use the larger version for all the same techniques. The Mink machines come with an owner's manual with lots of information in it, but there's one key page in here that you definitely need to keep out. So I think I'm going to cut this page out and keep it handy. This shows what the different five heat settings are used for. It goes from zero to five, zero being no heat applied, all the way up to five being like the maximum. Now I mostly will be using this at the three and maybe the two settings, but it is really handy to have this in case you want to try doing foiling on different types of surfaces or trying different techniques. So be sure to keep this. The Mink machines also come with transfer folders or carrier sheets. The mini comes with a small one that's about six by six. The large Mink machine comes with a giant one that you could even put a 12 by 12 scrapbook page in. Either machine, I recommend buying an extra pack of transfer folders. They're inexpensive. I think they're like five bucks for a package. This is what the package looks like here. In this package, you get a large transfer sheet, which works with the big machine, or could be cut in half, so you can get two long transfer folders for the smaller machine. And it also comes with one long, narrow transfer folder, which works with the mini too. I think this is good to do in case you mess up your folder. It's inexpensive, so it's good to have those on hand. And you'll actually see me mess up one of my folders in this video. Of all the accessories that you can get for the Mink, I highly recommend those transfer folders. Okay, so the mini comes with this small transfer folder. It also comes with a few sheets of practice foil and also some toner practice pieces, which you can see here. The large make machine also comes with these types of things. Now let's talk about the important part and that is foil. There are a few different types of foils out there. I'm gonna show you two today that I find work really well. First are the Heidi Swap Mink Foils. Now I will say these come in the most beautiful colors, gorgeous colors. You can buy individual packs. Some packs actually have two. There are some narrow sheets available like you see on the right or longer ones like this one that you see here that will cover something large to go through the large mink machine or you can cut it down for the mini. So be careful when you're buying this that you know what size you're getting and if there's more than one color in a pack. But there are some gorgeous colors like the ones you see here. 
ThermaWeb also has deco foil. I find that these are thicker and kind of easier to kind of lay around and cut up. And there are also some gorgeous colors in this. I find both of these work great for foil applicators. So I would recommend checking them out. And there's about the same amount in these two packages. So be sure to consider the different colors and types of foils available. They all work great. I'll show you both of these foils in action today. Even though one is thicker than the other, they seem to both work fine. And be sure to also check out, there are some really cool effect foils available in both of the lines. And here's a tip that might be helpful for you. Instead of storing my foil in those tubes, I like to take them out and put the, them in these job ticket sleeves. I'll link to what I use below. I use this to store my cardstock too. You could use page protectors if you want. These sleeves take up a lot less room than those tubes for storage, and it keeps all your scraps together, keeps them nice and tidy and flat. Okay, so we're getting close to the good part. Heidi Swap has many accessories and ready-to-go projects available. I mean, there are a ton of them. I wanted to show you an example of one of those today. So I chose some six by six papers. So basically you buy this pack of paper and you add the foil to it and you end up with pattern paper with foil. They're just beautiful. You can see there are lots of different types in here. There is a number at the top of each of her packages which tells you what heat setting to use on the machine. So I have one of the fun six by six papers here and you'll see that it's white and black. The white is the paper and the black is the toner that is required to hold that foil against that paper when we run it through the machine. I'll talk about toner in a little bit. So I have some Mint Heidi Swap Mink Foil here. It has a sticker that you gotta be real careful when you remove the first time. You don't wanna ruin the foil. I'm going to unroll this and you'll see that this is very thin but a beautiful color going to trim the foil down to be just slightly larger than the paper that we're using. I have my folder here, my carrier sheet open. I'm laying the paper down inside of it and then the foil with the pretty side facing up on top of that. And you want to make sure that you cover all of that toner. You don't want any black showing. Now we need to turn our machine to three, which is what it said on the package. So you press the gold button until you get to three. It'll be flashing black and then it turns green when it's ready and it doesn't take long at all. I think it even beeps at you to let you know it's ready. So I am feeding my transfer folder through the front of the machine. I put the crease of the folder in first and you can see how quickly it comes out. It's applying heat and pressure, which causes that foil to stick anywhere there was black on that paper. Once it has come out the other side, you open up the transfer folder. I kind of wave it a little bit to cool it off, peel off the foil and check out those amazing results. It's like a perfect mirror finish with that gorgeous mint color. And you can see it completely transferred with absolutely no problems. These results are just gorgeous. And I find that the Heidi Swap papers with this toner on it aren't that pricey. So it's perfect for creating unique things to add to your cards. Now I wanted to show you another example. This is the ThermaWeb foil. You can see it's much thicker than the Heidi Swap foil, but I find that I get great results with it too. And there are some fun colors available in the ThermaWeb foil also, so be sure to check them both out. I'm going to use this rose color, this pink color, to create another pattern paper using some of that toner paper from Heidi Swap. So this time we're going to have some polka dots. Again, I'm laying the paper into the transfer folder, which sometimes I call carrier sheet. Sorry if I switch the two. Lay the foil on top of that pretty side facing up, and we're going to run that through the machine. And I find that the same heat setting also works. Now, if you ever test something and you find it doesn't transfer enough, try one setting higher. It may work better for you. Okay, when we peel this off, you will again see some beautiful results. And I just wanted to compare the two next to each other. Very similar results. And I like that there are many different options for foils that you can use. I also mentioned there are some fun, uh, cool effect foils, like this rainbow one here. There are some glitter ones and star ones that you can check out also. Now here you're gonna see me make a mistake. Notice that I cut the foil too small for that toner paper. So some of that, those black dots are showing. What happens is when I put this through, that black will stick to the inside of my uh, transfer folder or my carrier sheet. It really doesn't matter. I, it'll eventually wear off, but you do wanna be careful. You'll see black dots on my transfer folder here. You wanna be careful to avoid that, but you'll see I use it in a bunch in the rest of this video. Okay, so there you can see those rainbow dots. It is just gorgeous. And in a few minutes, I'll show you what to do with the negative space of the foil for another project. Okay, so now let's talk about toner paper. I mentioned that that black toner is what causes the foil to stick to the paper. Now you can actually create your own toner paper using a laser printer or a copier at maybe an office supply store. It has to be laser. Inkjet will not work for this. 
Now, if you don't want to fuss with the laser printers or toner, what you can do is just buy the accessories from Heidi Swap and the foiling will work great. Printing your own toner images really isn't difficult and I will link below to a video where I've shown in the past how to do this for laminating. Now, Christina in the next video will talk more about this and she actually has some downloads that are really great for the foiling. This is one of the downloads that she has. Now, all I did was printed this on white Nina cardstock 80 pound on a laser printer. I have an inexpensive laser printer that works great. If not, you can save the file and print it at an office supply store. So I trimmed that down a little bit. I put the foil with the pretty gold side facing up into the transfer folder and I'm running that through my mini machine. And I find that the third setting, number three, works great for this. So what happens is wherever my laser printer put down that toner, we're gonna have a gorgeous transfer of foil and check out how beautiful that is. It's hard to see in the video, but you can see how it picked up those fine little detailed letters. So you can get really intricate designs using the machine. You can use a laminator for this, but I find that it works perfectly 100% of the time when you use the Mink machine. Again, this needs to be done with toner, which comes in a laser printer or some copiers. You can't use an inkjet printer to get this transfer of foil. Now I wanted to show you another great thing about this. You can actually apply foil to dark card stocks. So I printed one of Christina's downloads, which I'm gonna link to. I printed one of those with my laser printer on black card stock. You can barely see it there, but I'm gonna put some pink ThermoWeb foil on top of it, run it through the machine, and the pink will stick only to where that toner has printed. So you can even add foil to dark color cardstocks. It doesn't matter what color the paper is or what's on it. it. This will only stick to where there is toner. The laser printer that I use is very inexpensive. It's black and white and what I use for my everyday quick printing. However, you can also take this to your office supply store, have them print it for you, and then you can come home to add the foiling. Next, I wanted to talk about toner paper. Basically, this is paper completely covered with black toner so that you can create your own foil die cuts or do some fun techniques. Now, Heidi Swap does have toner paper available. This is completely covered with the black, so you can cover it entirely with foil and then die cut shapes. This is very inexpensive, but I haven't purchased any yet, so I'm going to use some toner paper that I created. I have a PDF over on my blog. All you need to do is print it out, and it prints a large area of black on white cardstock. So this is all toner. You can see the white cardstock on the back, and I just cut a small piece out of it here to use for this example. So again, this is just white cardstock covered with toner. So the foil will stick anywhere on this surface, so I can completely cover it with gold foil if I wanted to. Now here I wanted to show you a fun example. Remember those rainbow dots that I used before? I'm actually going to use the negative space on this toner paper for a fun technique. I just wanted to show you a way to get more out of your foil and use up those negative space pieces. So I am laying that negative space of those rainbow dots over that toner paper and I'm going to run this through the machine again. And this time that rainbow foil will stick all over the black toner paper. But you'll notice that we have black dots now. So why not add another layer of foil onto that black? So I have some silver foil here. I'm gonna lay this on top of it. And now the silver will only stick to those black dots. So we'll end up with silver dots with a rainbow background. This is a fun way to use up your negative space pieces. You can do these fun techniques using the Heidi Swap toner papers or ones that you created on your own with a laser printer. I really thought these results were fun here and I was going to create a card with this piece but my daughter took one look at it and off she was with it. My three-year-old loved this and I have no idea where it is now. So it's hers. She, she took claim of it. Okay, now foiling die cuts. This is very easy to do and there's a few different ways to do it but this is what I find gives the best results. I use that same toner paper that I showed you before, the white card stock covered with the black toner. From that toner paper, I have die cut this word friend from a mama elephant die. And you can see you can go really detailed with this if you want to. Okay, so now I'm going to lay that die cut into my transfer fo folder and add some foil right on top. This time I'm going to use silver. You always put the prettiest side of the foil facing up. And I'm going to run this through my machine. The three setting, again, seems to work for most things, but you can always play around with it if you're not getting good results, but I've never had a problem. Okay, so now I let this cool and when I peel it off, I get a perfectly foiled die cut. So the sky is the limit. What you do with this, you could punch your own paper. You can do whatever you want with foil on the toner paper. 
The last technique I wanted to show you today is adding foil to stamped images, which is something most stampers would like to see. I've done a video in the past showing how to add foil to stamped images using a laminator, and that same technique works with the mink, so I will link to that below. But I wanted to show you something different today just to show you a different option. These techniques do depend on how thick of a cardstock you're using and how much detail you have in your stamped image. So I'm gonna show you two different examples. First, I have a bold image, a friend image from Mama Elephant. You can see it's got nice bold lines to it, inking it up with Versamark ink and stamping it onto some 80 pound cardstock. That's what about what most colored card cardstocks are. Now I have some WOW bonding powder. This is meant for techniques like this where you want something to stick. You can also try different companies kind of sticky embossing powders for this. I'm gonna go ahead and heat set this with my heat gun until it changes to that smooth finish. You don't want to overheat this. Now you can also try this with clear embossing powder, but the sticky does work better, the sticky bonding powders. Now on your mink machine, you don't want as much heat because we don't wanna reheat this embossing powder too much. So I found that the mink heat setting of one works well for the example that I'm doing here. However, you will want to experiment with whatever stamp you have, just try it out. Part of the fun of crafting is experimenting and seeing what works best. So I'm adding a piece of foil on top of that with the silver shiny side up, and I'm gonna run this through the machine. So that little bit of heat and pressure actually causes that foil to stick to that powder and look at that beautiful shine that you get. So that seemed to work well with this bold stamped image. Now, if you're playing around and you find that that setting actually smooshes it a little bit too much, kind of flattens your image too much and makes it kind of run together, this is another thing that you can try, another setting. I'm going to heat emboss this thin line stamp image from uh, Paper Smooches. I like to use an anti-static powder first because anywhere this powder ends up heating onto this paper, foil will stick. So that's why I use the powder tool first. So I added that same WOW bonding powder. I'm going to heat set this just enough to change it to the shine. And I'm going to add a piece of foil on top of that again. Now, when I first put this through, I found it smooshed it too much and it had too much heat going to that powder. So this is what I did. I put the foil on top of the cardstock. Then I put a piece of white scrap cardstock on top of that. So this will prevent too much heat from getting in there, but just a little bit of heat so it does transfer it. This seemed to do the trick. This is 80 pound cardstock too. So I'm just gonna open this up and you'll see that that little bit of white cardstock prevented too much heat from getting to that powder and check it out, you get beautiful results. So if you do it and you find that not enough foil is transferring onto your image, turn up the heat. If you find too much heat is getting to it and it's kind of smooshing out your image, flattening it too much, then you wanna put a piece of white cardstock shim in there just to make sure. You can play around with it, it's a lot of fun to do. Okay, now Christina Warner, my dear talented friend, has another video for you today on how to create some amazing projects with this mink machine. She's going to show you how to create a watercolor background and then do foiling on top. And she has some great downloads for you. So please go check it out. That girl has more talent and kindness in her than any human being should have. I love her dearly. Okay, so everything I used linked below in the YouTube description, including those videos I mentioned. But be sure to also go over to my blog because I'll have a lot more information over there. And I may have a giveaway, so be sure to check it out. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you back soon.